Hello and welcome to the Haunted Hotel Inspector. My name's Richard Felix and I'm going to be travelling not just the country but hopefully the world visiting haunted hotels, haunted inns, haunted bed and breakfasts. Places that have got stories of ghosts, murders, suicides. Visiting the places, talking to the, the landlords, the landladies, the witnesses that have experienced ghosts and also sometimes spending the night, hopefully, in the haunted bedroom. Behind me is the Georgian Dragon in Belper, Derbyshire. It's the first of the series and already having done a little bit of research into it, it's extremely haunted. If I can just explain something, 25 years ago, hotels, inns, always kept their ghost stories quiet because of putting the customers off if they spent the night in the haunted bedroom. Customers sometimes coming downstairs in the morning saying, is there something wrong with this bedroom? I saw something in that, oh no madam, no, nothing at all, absolutely not. Things have changed. Since most haunted, Ghost Adventures and all the other ghost programs that have been on TV. It's changed. Ghost tourism is huge and people will, will even pay double the normal price just to stay in the haunted bedroom. That's what I'm going to be doing. But without further ado, I'm going inside to introduce you to Craig, the landlord. He put off doing this for a while because he was frightened of stirring things up. But as I explained to him, there's nothing to be frightened of. There were human beings that occupy this building, just like you and me. So, come inside and let's have a tour of the haunted Georgian dragon. Hey up, Craig. How do you do? Nice to see you. Wow. I would say this looks pretty pretty much like a coach did. <laughs> awesome. So, so where do we begin, the beginning? I mean, you, you put off doing this for a while, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Why? I was nervous about what would come from it, yeah. basically. Opening <laughs> up myself to the, the ghostly happenings that happened in the Georgian Dragon. I was warned by a medium that there was something deeper down there which could be a bit uh, nasty. So I yeah. got spooked, <laughs> spooked by it, basically. Really? Yeah. Now you've changed your mind. Yeah. Because honestly, as, as I've, I've said to so many people, they're not allowed to get you. Yeah. They, they were once the landlord or, or whoever it happened to be here. They've stayed behind for a reason. And really, the, there's no problem, I swear to you. But of course, you've had all manner of things going on. I mean, where do we start? That's the thing. Um, I, I, <laughs> I don't know. Tell me, tell me, tell me what, how it all started. Where, how long have you been here? I've been here 11 years, April coming. Wow. So 10 and a half years. So they're used to you, surely? Yes. And you're used to them? Yes. Um, yeah. I've, I've, I've only had one happening myself, personally. Right. That'll do to start with. Well, and I was basically <laughs> sat in this area we are now. Yeah. Watching telly late at night. All the, the, the staff had all gone home, etc. Um, sat watching the telly and noticed a little white dot appeared on the floor. And it started moving around my feet. It headed over towards the window, then back towards me, then over to the fire, back round my feet, and then out to the door. This is like sort of, I hate to say it, like a, we call orbs. Yeah. A sort of a... Well, I, I thought at first it was somebody with a watch. You know, when you get that little uh, oh, light. Yes, yes. And on the floor, and I, I thought, what is it? But I looked round, I couldn't see anything at all. And when it had disappeared, I was just trying to figure it out. And I couldn't, just went to bed thinking nothing more of it. No, no, anything. no. Next morning, I came downstairs, I'm doing the cleaning, there's a tap on the window as I'm opening the curtains and there's a big chap who used to come in regularly called Spencer. And he, he shook his head at me and I'm thinking, what's, what's, what's going on kind of thing? And he looked over at the road and there lying at the doorstep over the other side of the old bank was my cat, being hit by a car or oh something. Oh God. So in my mind, what's happened is she's been run over and it was a spirit visiting me as she, as she was going. That's a bit, of, bit, a bit of a peace of mind for me. It could have been anything else, but that, in my mind, 
it was the cat saying goodbye kind of thing. Oh my goodness. But that's that's but, the only real experience I've had personally. But, 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 but of course you sorry to start, you actually saw this this orb as we call them, because nobody knows. To me the jaw is out on orbs, I am not sure. But you actually saw it with your eye your eye. Yes. Because yeah. you see, normally they catch them on digital cameras, yeah, yeah. but you, this was not. This it was, was white light. It was probably so big, and it was, it was moving around the floor, up towards the table, <laughs> back to me, round up to the fire, back to me, round my feet. As your cat up. did. Yeah. So if you, nah. you'd, come down, you'd come down in the morning. She, if she'd slept down in the downstairs in the night, she'd come and greet you by rubbing her leg against. <laughs> you wanted some food. <laughs> wanted to either go out or to come. She wouldn't necessarily go at that door. No. But she'd be. Around the fire, she's moving yeah. backwards and forwards. But of course, she probably had gone out there because that's where she got run over. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Oh, I say, that's a belter. That's quite something, that is. So you, you've obviously got you've got ghosts down here as well. Down, yes. ghosts in the cellar. Yeah. Ghosts in the bedrooms. Yes. Can we can we have a look? Yes. Uh, ha I mean, how many haunted bedrooms have you got? Well, oh. there's pretty much. Out of the four rooms that we let out, three of them have had activity. Now room three is, is probably where most of the activity yeah. has happened. Yeah. You know, people sitting in the room, lights turning off, people getting locked in the room. So there's, there's a number of different stories in okay. itself. So, uh, Can we go and have a look around? Yes, follow Awesome. Yes, yeah, so it's just up here. Right. So, I mean, this was a coaching inn, obviously. Um, it was built 330 years ago. Yeah. Um, the, the A6, of course, is the main north-south route for stage coaches, uh, post coaches, the, everything. And so it must have had an incredible history um, during coaching days. Yeah. Yeah. Suicides, murders, um, coroner's office, everything went on here. And now we're going up to, obviously, the rooms where... Obviously, passengers would have stayed, um, committed suicide during the night, um, been robbed, but all sorts of... Come on, let's go. Let's go and have a look. Right, this is room five. Yes. Now, this is where there has been happenings in room five. <laughs> right. Nice room, nice room. Basically, um, in this room, it's all about the chair. So right, chair, okay. Chair in the corner. It's not very old. <laughs> no, no. The, the, we've had, um, on a couple of different occasions, we've had people staying, and they've said in the night, what's happened is they've heard a shuffle. Now, you know, you, you sometimes hear movement outside. Oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, It's yeah. not silent. But you can room. tell when it's in your you room. You can tell when it's yeah. in your room. And they said, basically, what's happened is the chair, as it's set now, is how we... The, bit, the feng shui of the room kind of thing. Yeah. We've, we've got it situated yeah. so you can watch your television. But... They've said that the chair's moved, so basically it's gone from that position and just spun round to that position. Now, okay. over the years, these rooms would have been knocked around a fair. Oh, of course bit. they would. Yes. So these, this perhaps wouldn't be as as it was. Yeah. So, could have been bigger. Could have yeah. been. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. For some reason the chair always ends up from there, turning to there when they've heard the shuffle. And this is more than once. Yeah. Twice. This is. Oh, really? Yeah. And what? What? So you see, basically. You're a hotel, right? So, yeah. in other words, someone comes down in the morning for breakfast or co comes to you through a and Yeah, it's, it's the pain on the way out. I've had it on a couple of occasions and we chat. They said, everything okay? Yeah. I said, yeah, it's been fine, but a strange thing happened in the night. And the chair's moved and it's... You know, I can't, I can't explain it. I mean, possibly someone staggered out of bed and... Oh, of course. Chair, You've got to tick the normal boxes yeah. first. But even so... It, well, it's it's not a flimsy chair, is it? It's not. No, it's, it's not. No, it no, it's it's, it's hardly going. Easily. It's hardly a lorry going by that causes a bit of a, a vibration that causes it to move around like that. And that's just because this is just part of the whole the whole story of this place. That's just one of the many. Well, it, you know, as we were talking about before with the uh, coroners and autopsies and such like, ah. bodies would have been stored up in on, on this on this floor because yeah. it would have been an easy place to store them. So you wouldn't want leave a body in the room. Perhaps do the autopsy downstairars yeah. they would have stored the, the bodies yeah up, oh up God, yeah, floor, I mean so. it's got such a, a, a history behind it, as we'll talk about as we go around. Okay. Uh, which room next? Let's have a look at uh, room three, the most haunted room. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
The Most Haunted Room. This is probably the smallest room we've got, but yep. I think it's probably the closest, as in, in the bedroom area, to being the most original of the rooms. Okay, yeah, yeah. All yeah. we've done is carpeted and painted. Yeah. So the, the walls and such like, if when we took the plaster work off, um, there's still the horse hair. Oh, it's original. In fact, that's because I mean, it's not, it's quite solid compared to, yeah, okay. It's not like a normal plaster board no, wall, no, is it? No, so no, no. But, uh, yeah, as far as this room's concerned, um, for a while my mother-in-law and father-in-law stopped it and lived in the building while they were doing some alterations to their house. Mm. Um, and because my father-in-law snores a fair bit, <laughs> mother-in-law ended up in this room. <laughs> yep. So Vanessa ended up staying in this room here uh, one one summer night. I can't even tell you the exact date. Uh -huh. She was just you know she was asleep in the bed, and she said she felt the bed as if someone was sitting on the end of the bed, so that, that kind oh, of Oh, I hear a lot of that. Oh. But she said when she looked at the end of the bed, it had pressed in, and there was a shape of somebody sat there, and then she saw it rise, the, the bed raise again, so as if the bottom was lifting off the, off the bed again. She and didn't see anybody didn't or see anything. anything. No, it was night time as well, so it was, it was, it was dark, so, but, with with these rooms, if you don't close your curtains, you do get the orange glow. Oh yes, of course, because I mean the main roads. That the A6 is there, isn't yeah. it? Full of light. Yeah. So in other words, I presume feeling feeling that as you want, she yeah. that's what for what woke her up, or she was half asleep, yeah. but she actually felt something. Yes, felt. It. But then looked, but actually saw an indentation. Yeah. So she she felt the initial as the, the as it went yeah, down. Yeah. Yeah. And then she saw it as it raised up. So, oh, so okay. Other story: um, lamp in the corner. There's been yep. times when Rebecca, my other half, yeah, she's had the lamp on, yeah, unplugged it, and the light stayed on. <laughs> now that's, I mean, I, I well, bizarre. It, the whole thing's down to energy. You see, I'd like to change the name from ghost to energy. It's an energy that's in you that leaves the body on point of death, and, and for all scientists know only too well, first law of thermodynamics, you can neither create nor destroy energy. So that energy that was, was someone has to be either have gone wherever or stayed here. And it's an energy thing that causes, you know, lifts to go up and down, computers, televisions to come on and off, lamps to come on even though they're not, you know, it's energy. Yeah. And the sooner we start to realise that, the better. Yeah. Today's magic will be tomorrow's science. Yeah. But so we still don't understand it, we're still in the Middle Ages. For myself, the reason I've left it this long to, to get involved was the story that we're going to talk about later on. Okay. But, um, you know, I've, the, first, the, the first point was when I spoke to the me a medium and they were saying to leave the place alone. Yeah. And that frightened me because I'm a bit of a wuss. <laughs> So yeah. I'd, I'd always kind of trust me. There's nothing, it, nothing to be frightened of. I say we fear what we don't understand, and we shouldn't. Yeah. More haunted rooms? Yes. Hey. Unfortunately, we can't get into this room. But That's I can, all right. I can tell you the story. Yeah, great. So here we have uh, room four. Unfortunately, we've got somebody stopping in there at the moment, oh, so I can't... Alive? Yes, they're yeah, alive. Okay. <laughs> I don't think they're actually in the room physically, but I don't want to go rooting through no, of course, No, of course not. No. But, uh, we had a, a group of lads in a band come and stay um, in room four quite often they, they, they stay locally and uh, do a bit of recording. Yep. Now, they had a few to drink the night yep. before. A few spirits behind the bar, yeah. They, they weren't completely sober, but I, I saw them the next morning. <laughs> they came down, I said, everything okay with your room, etc. And one of the lads, he, was, he said, well, the funny thing is, and this is before we'd spoken about any of the history of the pub, etc. He said, I woke up about five o'clock and as the light was coming through the window, and he said, I can't, I can't explain it, but there was a man stood at the end of my bed. I swear there was a man stood at the end of my bed. And I said, really? I said, was it one of your mates going to the toilet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in, he, the end of his bed was on the way into the toilet. Yeah. And he said, uh, definitely not. He had a white wig on. Now, periwig sort of, you know, yeah. 18th century. So, yeah. so if, and it, with the stories of it being a possible uh, magistrate court type things going oh, on. Absolutely, here, absolutely. So it's like 
Could it be a judge? Could it could it be it King George the Second? Well, it's Dapper called the II. George George and Dragon, of course. Yeah. And funnily enough, of course, you do have a picture downstairs. Yes. Uh, the old original sign of, of, sign of George the Second yeah. with his white wig on. Uh, as far as I know, George the Second never stayed here. But you yeah. know, and I, but you see, the thing is that people did. You see. People, this was posh, this was a good coaching in. And so anybody special passing through, you know, would, would stay up, would stop off. Yeah. And uh, we're talking of the heyday of the coaching ins when people still wore periwigs. Yeah. I mean, obviously it could have been anybody. Yeah. But even so, um, the fact that it's, it's, it was an old fashioned figure, it, yeah. it's, it's when it was in its heyday, this is. And the other interesting thing was, just moving back slightly, was the fact that that picture, the sign that we've got on the wall, mm. wasn't there at the time. That's only been there two years. Ah, so that wasn't so in his wasn't mind. Like he, yeah, he hadn't seen it the night before. Yeah, you see, that can happen. Nothing about the history. Uh, so. Love it. Nice one. Excellent. Do they know about the man in the periwig? Would not mentioned it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, there is a story in here of one of the haunted bedrooms that a guy from a, a pop group actually saw a figure standing at the foot of his bed wearing a white periwig, 18th century wig. Um, this is the original sign many, many years ago um, when it was called the George. Uh, and it's a picture, of course, of George, King George II. And so you could say, oh, yeah, you're probably having a drink down here. Yeah, I had a few drinks. That was in his mind. And at five o'clock in the morning, he woke up dreaming. And he said, but the fascinating thing is that that picture was not here when that chap stayed in that bedroom. The case rests. Right, so in, uh, in the past, this used to be the entrance into the old bathroom. So the one bathroom would look after the four, room, four rooms on the top Got floor. you, yeah. Um, my other half, Rebecca, is in the bathroom, is in the toilet. At the time, there were three or four lads that we all lived here when we first took over the place. So there wasn't actually B&B &B going on, but people just living in different, yeah. different rooms as a bunch of friends running the pub. She was using the toilet, etc. And the door handle started going. So she she shouted the obvious thing, you know, I'm on the toilet. Yeah, yeah. You know, leave it alone kind of thing. Finished up, came to the door. I look out, nobody about. Door starts going again moments later when she's washing her hands. So she pops her head out. Who's messing around? You know. Yeah, and four lads in the pub and just her. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. Just a bit of fooling around. Kind just of as a matter of interest. Had anything happened before? In other words, did you know, did she know, did everyone know that there might be something going on here, ghost-wise? No, no. Ah. This, this was pretty early on. In the so nobody was pranking because... because the, no, no. Right, there, okay. There had not been any, any kind of sightings or anything right. that we'd thought of. Yeah. So she's in the bathroom having a morning wash or whatever kind of thing. And the door handle goes again. So she looks out. You know, come on, stop messing around, lads. Locks the door. Yeah. Back in there, all of a sudden, the actual little latch, which, you know, one of those little... This is handles, a different door, of course. Yes, yes. different door. Yeah. It's a fire door now, but beforehand it was just an old kind of wooden door. Yep. But it had like a little latch which pushed into the, the hole in the door to, to lock it. A bolt. Inside, a bolt, yeah. yeah. So all of a sudden, the bolt starts moving up and down on its own in front of Rebecca's very eyes. Inside, inside yes. Inside the toilet. Inside the bathroom. Yes. So it's going to... She That's it. down. She went screaming. Liam was down behind the bar. She said, "What? You know, yeah, what have you been doing? How?" But there was no, there was no way. We're away from the, the road. There's no vibrations or anything happening up here. It's quite quiet, as you can hear. You know, there's no, 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 nothing. So, so uh, here we go. Ghost detective. Yeah. So the bolts on the inside, obviously. Yeah. There's there's no hole there's no way anybody on this outside could have got a screwdriver yeah. put do you know what i mean because that's yeah. no it was purely on the inside and it was drawn back from the inside from the inside oh so she got herself out of there and down i should think she did but you see the fascinating thing about this is that the number of haunted toilets that there are around the place. I mean, if I live long enough, my next ghost book's going to be called Toilet Ghosts, <laughs> honestly. But, but you must remember, this wasn't the toilet. When this was a coaching inn, when this was, you know, 200 years ago, yeah. so, that wasn't the toilet. It's an energy thing. It's back to this energy. Water. And that's the number of haunted sites that are damp or wet, yeah. including bathrooms and toilets. Yeah. I say. But now it's, it's, what is it now? Just a... a Just a closet. Oh, it's a closet now, yeah. yeah. And, and no, no, of course, but because it joins on into the 
bathroom of the... Yeah, so we've, we've gone through a wall, a, a partitioning wall, and created an ensuite for... Yeah. Where the haunted bedroom is. Yeah. <laughs> so. Awesome. Okay. Downstairs? Yeah. Down to the bar. Down to the bar. The reason I'm here at the Georgian Dragon is because we've created a new streaming channel called NetFelix. That's netfelix.co.uk, where we've put all of the films I've done over the last 20 years, that's both history and ghosts and various other things as well, and we've created a series called The Haunted Hotel Inspector, hence the fact I'm here. And then they show me this amazing footage of this orb and the glass blowing up. It, it's beyond anything. You, you really need to see this because I can't explain it. And I'm the guy that's trying to prove what ghosts are. And as I've said already, as regards orbs, I'm not sure. But I've never seen an orb do this and then blow a glass up. Watch this space. last because this is beyond anything come on tell us all about it well I was actually in Bridlington at times so the reason I said when we first when we first spoke about orbs the only thing I've actually physically experienced was the orb with the potentially the cat now I was in Bridlington on holiday right and I get a text message coming through from young Dan behind the bar who just happens to be here because he witnessed it yes yeah, yeah. we'll talk to him in a minute he said basically th a glass has just exploded at the Georgian Dragon. One of the regulars of the glass had exploded. Have a quick look on the CCTV. Ha ha ha. Thinking the glass has blown up. It's funny that it's got soap with beer. So I've got access to the CCTV. Yeah. I've got the camera up, oh, up yonder. Perfect, yes, yes. And so I, I'm sat in the B&B &B over in Bridlington with my, my, my phone watching. And I'm sat watching and all of a sudden I, it just draws my attention immediately to the time because it, it said it's about 20 past 20 past six at night yes so I, I'm sat watching and I've been watching it four or five minutes this video nothing's happened all of a sudden I notice because you see like little flashes of like little white bits of dust particles from the yeah camera. yeah you, just, you get breezes and all yeah because you dust yeah this little white orb appears on the screen it travels towards the table at the exact moment the glass explodes beer down onto the floor and then the orb casually just disappears back again towards the door immediately and i'm it, dan up and i'm dan dan we've, i've just seen an orb and it's an orb, it's yeah, i mean right first things first orbs i yeah. mean they, you know they, they basically as you said earlier you actually saw one with your yes. your eyes rather yeah. than, it's all down to supposedly down to digital photography. Yeah. Nobody seems to have seen orbs until that came out. But first things first, if you shine a, a, a torch, a high powered torch, yeah. even in the daytime, you'll see thousands yeah. of, of dust particles, yeah. orbs, for want of a better word. Yeah. But one on its own, is, it seems to be different. But so this travels along the floor. So basically, so if we're stood here, it travels roughly where my finger is, along to, to this, to just where that chair is. Right. Just where the chair is stops, the glass explodes with, you can see like a, the, the liquid travelling. Yeah. But the orb then just casually comes away. So it's not blown away by the explosion, it just travels back again and then disappears. Now, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not, I'm not a, a, a disbeliever or a believer no, 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 particularly, no. but to see that, I was like... It, it, yeah, you see, if, if what I'm saying, that ghosts are energy, which is what it's all about, is this single sort of, like you'd seen a light in it, which is similar, yeah. like you thought was a watch, or whatever, is this sort of, is that the energy? Is that Tinkerbell? Is that sort of the, the actual energy force that for some reason has caused that glass to move, to blow up? I don't, but you, so Dan, you, 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 you were here. You saw it happen. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much stood where I am now. Right, and who was there? 
Oh. Uh, just four regulars um, in sorting, you know, sitting, chatting about work. Um, and I say I was involved in the conversation. Right. And then, yeah, next thing the glass just popped. And, it, and even when I say popped, it really shattered. But it was a stellar glass, so it's obviously got the stem. And there's a little orb sitting on the, the stem of the, the glass. And I say the, the glass itself, <laughs> the chalice, popped and it left the stem sat on the table. It's not possible. Well, it is possible because it happened. You've got it on yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, That's right. the beauty of it. I mean, when, when Craig when Craig rang and he said, "Oh, there's an orb," and I mean, I know that he you know he tends to waffle <laughs> and, have a, and have a bit of a laugh. So I was like, yeah. "All right." And yeah. anyway, an hour later, he sends us the footage. And I was like, right. <coughs> "I know he's not, you know, he's not tech-minded enough to be able to edit it in that time." Or, no, you know, no, 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 no. Sort of genuine footage come across. Uh, so yeah, it was a bit. And what yeah. what did the guys say do that was sat there? Asked for another pint. <laughs> Right. Yeah. But yeah, no, I say obviously they, they just sort of said, oh, that was weird. So yeah, text Oh, that was weird. weird, just like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it, 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 I've seen it happen before with glasses when they've come out of the dishwasher, put them back on the shelf and they've popped. But no, I mean, that had been sat there for a, a little period of time, full. So yeah, that's, wow. that was a little bit different. Awesome. Fantastic. Now, next bit, there is also on the same CCTV footage a dog. Yes. That is over there? Yeah, so he was sat over. Here, here, this gentleman here. Yeah. Again, we have cameras on the other side, videoing across here, and you actually see the dog looking across at the table before any of the customers who sat with the dog react. So it's almost like the dog spotted something, and then the customers have heard the glass smash and looked across. You know, it's not like the dog's gone at the no. glass. It's seconds before, as the orb's travelling. The dog's looking across at it. And then it's actually standing staring, isn't it? Yeah, it's, pulling, it's, it's pulling its lead as if to chase something. Or as, as if oh, boy. Something. So it's this, is, this is good. Oh, this is really good. Um, I, I'll throw to bits with this. So, I don't know. Uh, but it's in the same place, of course, that you actually saw, saw yes, the, yeah, the, the yeah. similar thing, but with your own eye. Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. I can only say one thing. I think you've got ghosts here, mate. <laughs>
Now, unless someone's playing silly beggars, and, and I don't see why anyone would, because I haven't spoken to anybody about it, I cannot understand. <laughs> that chair would be there. That's done it already. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, I'm going to get ready for bed. Um, talk to you in a minute. This is it. Um, let's see. I mean, I'm in the haunted bedroom. I'm frightened of ghosts. Uh, this morning, when we were filming, the chair was there. It, it's there. Uh, and at the end of the day, nobody's been prattling about. It. Nobody's done this on purpose. I, I don't understand it. But better than that, while we were having a drink downstairs, a bit of Dutch courage before I even dared come up here. Um, sat there having a drink, and there's a little um, display blackboard um, on um, a display case for uh, for sandwiches. And all of a sudden, for no reason whatsoever, it's launched itself off the case t towards me and landed on the floor. Um, I'm just hoping that they've caught that as well. Um, I, I don't know. I don't like this. Uh, but I said I'd do it. So here we go. Um, a night in the haunted bedroom. As I used to say all the time after my DVDs and everything else. I'm saying it to me now. Do sleep well. Don't have nightmares. six in the morning. Still dark. Um, I have to be honest, I had a very peaceful night. Nothing disturbed me. Um, the chair, which was over there, <laughs> is still here. It hasn't moved at all. Um, nothing bothered me in the night. Um, I'm up at 6.30 because I'm off to another haunted hotel, the Jamaica Inn in Cornwall. So, without further ado, I'm out of here to the next haunted hotel.